Oliver and the Twins, Part 8 For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When Mr. Grey Bear heard the twins screaming at him, he stopped his car and got out to talk to them. So this is the brother who paints pictures, is it? I guess the girls have told you it was I who bought your mother's picture. Yes, sir, Oliver answered politely. When the tall gentleman invited Oliver and the girls to visit him the next week, Oliver accepted gladly. Everyone is so kind, he said. Why did he look and look and look at you so, Oliver? Babs wondered after the man had gone on in his car. When the day for their visit arrived, the twins were very excited. We liked Mr. Graybeard right from the start, they said. But Oliver, do you know we still don't know his name? He only told you where he lives, didn't he? Well, if he likes Mr. Graybeard for a name, he probably thought he'd just let it go at that. They found the big old-fashioned house. Mr. Grey Bear opened the door for them himself. They ate their meal on a big table set with lovely dishes. The little girls sat up straight and were most mannerly. Oliver noticed many lovely paintings around the house. But when they sat down to eat, he noticed his mother's painting hanging on the wall in front of him. Beneath it hung four of the sketches which Oliver had painted and sold to the man in the shop. Mr. Grey Bear noticed Oliver staring at the pictures. Have you seen any of these before, he asked. I blush to see mine beside my mother's, Oliver replied. You like to paint? I love it. I wanted to be an artist. I should like to have studied art. But I never had lessons except from my mother. Your mother taught you well. But why have you not studied? It is because we do not have the money, Oliver said simply. The man looked at Oliver keenly. Have you no relatives to help you? he asked. I believe we have an uncle somewhere. We came to top minister to find him. But either he has died or he has moved somewhere else. Do you expect him to support you if you find him? Oliver held his head high and looked Mr. Gray Bear straight in the eyes. No, sir. I'd never ask him to do that. But he might give me some good advice. I am only 15 years old, you know. But quite a man for all that, I can see, Mr. Gray Bear said. Oliver kept looking longingly and lovingly at his mother's painting. Do you know why I bought that, Mr. Gray Bear said. I suppose, sir, it was because you like it. That is true. I like it very much. But it attracted me most because it is a picture of my childhood home. Oliver stared at him. But it was my mother's home. Did you live there before or after my mother? I lived there at the same time as your mother did. Then you, you are... Yes, Oliver, I am your mother's brother. I am your uncle. The twins slid down from their big chairs. They walked around to Mr. Graybeard and put their arms around him. We just knew our uncle would be a nice man, Oliver. Aren't you glad it was Mr. Graybeard instead of that Mr. Smith whose wife was so mean to you? You see, our father knew all the time. We were going to find Mr. Graybeard, our uncle. Your name, please, sir? Oliver asked, still shocked. My name, Oliver, is Smith. J. Smith. But recently, I have added another name to mine. It is the name of a great friend who has passed on. I am now known as Mr. John Crawford Smith. This is why you failed to find me, I think. It was while I was visiting my friend in the big house close to you that I met your little sisters. I fell in love with them. They reminded me of my sister when she was small. 
And then they told me their story. I was sure you were my sister's children. We are so glad we have found you, Uncle, the girl said timidly. We would have picked Mr. Graybeard any time for our uncle. Now to think you are really he. Four little arms went tighter around Mr. Graybeard's neck. Soon they were all crying a little, and none was ashamed of the tears. When the little girls went out into the garden to play, Oliver and his newly found uncle had a long, serious talk. Oliver told his uncle as much as he could remember about his mother. He told him all that had happened to them since their mother died. He left nothing out. He even told about his gambling and the money he had lost. The uncle soon saw what a fine nephew he had found. And before Oliver and the girls left for their home, everything had been arranged for them to move into their uncle's house where the girls could have proper schooling and Oliver could study art. That night, Oliver and the girls felt they already knew what was meant by, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Even though King God's kingdom was not on his, this earth as yet, he did rule, and he made everything come out right for his children. Surely they had seen some of his power and his glory in their lives. Together, Oliver and the girls did their quiet time notebooks. Then after prayer, Oliver said, Just see what God has done for us because we trusted him. Surely he is the power and the glory, as the Lord's Prayer says. Our biggest troubles have turned out for our good. Remember how bad we felt when we turned out of our place in Top Minister? The girls nodded, remembering the wrong things they had done there. Well, if we hadn't been sent away from there, we never would have come here and probably would never have found our uncle. And then I took my picture to Mrs. Sutherland and found she was away. I was disappointed because she would have given me more than the man could in the shop. And if we, and if you were rich, you would not have sold the picture and our uncle would not have bought it. So it was good we are poor, Babs volunteered. Yes, and if you had sold it to Mrs. Sutherland, our uncle would never have seen it, Debbie said. Oliver smiled at his two happy sisters. Since you are both such good thinkers, he said, perhaps you can understand this. Our Father in Heaven is the King, but He is absent for a time. Someday He will come back to this earth, and this will truly be His kingdom. And so we pray Thy kingdom come. We knew that before, Oliver, Bab said. All right. Now then. Even though God is not here on here as an earthly king, not yet. That is, his unseen power is really ruling. This is his kingdom, and we are his subjects. We belong to him, and best of all, his power and glory shall be forever and ever. We must do whatever he wants us to do. Sometimes it looks as though Satan is having his way here. But the power is not really his. It is our Father's power. We must never forget this. I guess we understand it a little better now, Oliver, Bab said. Yes, all but the Amen. How about that, Oliver? Debbie wanted to know. Well, Amen means, so be it. If you want all these things to be as you pray, you say, Amen. So be it at the end. It was Babs who said, Then I guess we'd better be careful how we pray. Pray our own prayers. I mean, not just the Our Father, huh, Oliver? We might pray for the wrong thing, and it wouldn't be best for us, even if we thought so when we were praying. I'm always going to say, Amen, if it's your will, Debbie said. 
I guess that's a good way, Oliver smiled at his sisters. I think that will be the best way to pray, he said. But right now, let us pray together the prayer the Lord Jesus gave to his disciples. He gave it to us too, huh, Oliver? Surely, he gave it to all who believe in him and are his children. Let us pray thinking of the words and really meaning them, everything we say. Then we won't be doing what the Lord said not to do. We'll not be using vain repetitions. With a new life stretching before them, Oliver and the twins knelt together, never to forget the many lessons they had learned through their study of the Lord's Prayer. Sincerely and earnestly, they prayed together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed by thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.